Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with some soldiers, on the ground under the moonlight, waiting for instructions from their company in a deserted forest, and there are burnt automobiles everywhere. Thomas Beckett is also among the troop of those snipers. The target is approaching near them, and Beckett tells everyone to shoot once the enemy is too close. On the other hand, Captain Larrabee instructed the soldiers to hold fire. The target gets so close that Beckett shoots the vehicle, and he goes against Larrabee's orders. It is revealed later on, it was all a part of their practice routine, and the soldiers were present inside an AI room. Captain comes outside and reprimands Beckett for his rash behavior. Beckett tells him that real war is not like this practice game, and if you don't shoot out there, you die. Captain calls Beckett a liability, and leaves angrily. Next, in Ho Chi Minh City, a teenage drug dealer is walking towards his girlfriend's apartment. The building is filled with junkies and gamblers. As he gets inside her flat, he encounters an unknown man. The boy panics and asks his girlfriend who he is. His girlfriend tells him he is a buyer too, and is here to buy some drugs from him. It is revealed that this mystery man is Inspector Kwan, NSA recruited Vietnamese police operative. The boy seizes his girlfriend, and shoots her to distract the cop, managing to flee. After a massive gunfight, Kwan chases him and is successful in capturing the boy. Kwan then calls someone and says, he has done his job of catching a cobra, a mafia organization's pawn, and that the receiver of the call must arrange their best sniper. The scene shifts back to Washington DC. Beckett's family friend Neil Finnegan's wedding is taking place in a beautiful marquee. Everyone is congratulating the newly wedded. Neil goes to his mom Sydney, and tells her that they can't wait for Beckett to come and make a toast, as he is already late. When they are about to cut the cake, Beckett appears with a note in his hand. Everyone is happy to see him, especially Sydney, and they hug. Beckett goes to the stage and he starts reading from the note. After reading some mystically purifying words of love and best wishes, Beckett discloses that his best friend, Paul Finnegan, Neil's father and Sydney's ex-husband, gave this letter to Beckett 30 years ago, before he died serving with him in the Vietnam War. Later, Beckett dances with Sydney, and they both clearly have feelings for each other. Suddenly, Beckett's hand starts shaking. Sydney asks him to come by her office tomorrow, as she is a doctor by profession. He agrees. Elsewhere, CIA's head, William Avery gives orders to his front man, Richard Addis, that he needs Beckett to be appointed for a secret mission in Ho Chi Minh City immediately. The next morning, while Beckett is in Sydney's office, she tells him that the loss of his trigger finger caused severe nerve damage, which is causing his tendon to cause uncontrollable twitches in the remaining fingers of his damaged hand. Later, the two reminisce about Paul and their camping days. She suggests Beckett should take her out on a date, and urges him to leave the armed services for the sake of his health. The scene pans to a hotel room where Beckett lives. He is watching a war movie and drinking. Additionally, he is going through his and Paul's old photos. He is now extremely tipsy and he comes across a locket that was lying in the photos box. He closes his eyes and a hallucinating episode of Vietnam War strikes him. He sees his 30-year prior version in the battlefield, along with other soldiers, firing at the enemy. Unfortunately, a bullet hits Beckett. Wounded Beckett is lying on the wall, when Paul appears from an underground hole, and takes Beckett inside it. On reaching the bottom, Paul gives Beckett an amulet, the same necklace Beckett is holding in his hand at present, to save him from bad luck. Enemies manage to barge into the tunnel from the other side, but Paul shoots them and saves Beckett's life. The episode ends when Beckett is awakened by two men in his room. They are agents from the CIA. They tell him he has been summoned by the head William. On the other hand, in Willheim's office, Larrabee asks him to reconsider his decision about hiring Beckett for the job. Beckett learns through William that Paul's supposed demise in Vietnam was a hoax, and he is still alive. Prior to the fall of Saigon, the CIA hired him to help the Khmer rogue smuggle heroin out of Cambodia. But Paul lost his mind and is now the King Cobra, a trafficker of drugs and guns. His army includes a sizable number of young soldiers, resides in the tunnels beneath the forests of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Moreover, he enlightens Beckett that Paul has joined hands with terrorists, and if Paul is caught by Vietnamese police, serious international crisis will surface. William says if the head is killed, the whole organization will fall to pieces, hence Beckett has to take out the very same man, his best friend Paul, who saved his life 30 years ago in the war. He thinks about Neil and Sydney and feels guilty, but in order to spare them shame the truth will bring if unveiled, Beckett has to do it. He agrees and asks the CIA to let him complete the mission alone. Then Beckett is seen in Ho Chi Minh City, where he meets Quan, the NSA recruited cop. At night, Beckett calls Sydney, 
who is half asleep, and tries to tell her that she and Neil mean the world to him, and that he wouldn't do anything to hurt them on purpose. Sydney gets emotional and expresses her love for Beckett, who confesses his feelings to her too. In the morning, Quan meets Beckett and gives him his number, and tells him to contact him once the mission is done. They discuss their strategy in the rooftop from which Beckett will shoot. Later that night, Beckett goes to the rooftop and sets up his equipment. The Club Kong, where Paul will be arriving shortly, is filled with people, dancing and drinking. Quan and his associates are also present among them. Quan instructs Beckett to be ready, and tells his people to keep their eyes open for every movement. Unfortunately, Beckett's gun faces some technical issue, and he shoots another person, Khan Choi, one of Paul's business associates, sitting right in front of Paul. This causes a massive gun fire, and suddenly, Beckett is counter-shot by another sniper. He manages to kill him, but is caught by Vietnamese police. This news reaches Washington DC as well, and police are investigating Beckett in the interrogation cabin, where he tells them that he is just a tourist. Police torture him, and tell him the man he shot was a Cambodian. Beckett asks to contact the US Council, but the investigator turns a deaf ear to his demands. Quan receives a call from the US and learns that the second sniper was hired to finish Beckett. Beckett is thrown into jail, where he meets Paul in a different cell, held in custody. However, Paul claims that the very people he worked for, sold him out after he had finished his task. Paul claims that he left his wife and son behind, because the jungle made him feel more alive than he was ever before. Beckett tells Paul that there was another sniper at the scene, to which Paul claims that they will kill Beckett, as they tried to terminate Paul once. Moreover, he tells him that Beckett isn't the first person who is assigned this job. Many others have come and died, that's why Paul lives in a ditch, hiding behind shadows. In the meantime, two police officers come and escort Beckett out of the cell. Outside the police station, Quan notices a familiar face from the Club Kong coming out of the station, and in seconds, the whole place blows up. It is Paul who destroyed the police station in order to flee, giving Beckett the opportunity to do the same. The news reaches William as well. Quan is contacted by Beckett, and he threatens Quan to reveal his true identity to Vietnamese police, that he really works for the CIA. He instructs to meet him at the People's Unification Building in two hours, with weapons and transportation. Quan does as told, and tells Beckett that Paul's body hasn't been found. Beckett is dubious of the purpose of his task, therefore he wants to find Paul and look into the matter. Elsewhere, Richard comes and tells William Avery that Quan isn't responding back, and Beckett's and Paul's bodies weren't found in the casualties. Afterwards, Quan and Beckett set off on their journey to catch Paul. Quan asks Beckett how he knows that Paul is hiding in the ditches of Tay Nin, he says that when he was locked up in prison with him, his tongue slipped. On the other hand, CIA is successful in tracing Beckett's and Quan's current location. After arriving in a nearby village, Beckett's PTSD strikes, as he envisions himself back into the war days of Vietnam. They then travel together again, to find out if the CIA really planned to kill Beckett after mission completion or not. Moreover, if they can eliminate Beckett, they can do it to Quan too. Paul is the only one with the answers. CIA sends agents to a nearby village, and they find Quan's cell phone there, hence now they are not traceable. On knowing this, William orders his men to find Beckett, before he finds Paul and learns the truth. Next, Beckett and Quan are in a jungle that is surely armed by Paul's men. After they defend themselves from an ambush, he finds Paul in the ditch, an abandoned Viet Cong underground system beneath Tay Nin. While inspecting the area in a secretive manner, Quan trips and collapses in front of Paul. Paul sends his men to catch Beckett, and he makes Quan fight his best henchman. Quan unwillingly kills him and Beckett is also successful in eliminating the men pursuing him. Beckett comes back and tries to negotiate with Paul from behind a rock, and Paul holds Quan at gunpoint, telling Beckett the truth. When Paul was hired by the CIA and began working for them, he was in the ditch with John Gaylor, William Avery, and an AP photographer named Stevie York. This photographer caught their activities on camera. Over the course of three days, York saw the three men kill nine innocent civilians, six men and three women, while under the influence of drugs. Because of this, the boys made York burn the film, but they later killed him to make it look like the NVA was to blame. Gaylor ordered William to fool Beckett into shooting Paul, in order to prevent any information from leaking out, and then hired another sniper to assassinate Beckett, to stop any more information from going out. Gaylor is now a senator from Texas and is running for president, so he cannot have Paul arrested and reveal his gloomy past. In an attempt to save Quan, Beckett executes Paul, by shooting one of Paul's young soldiers in the hand, which results in Paul being shot in the head rather than Quan. 
The gang gives up and departs, since they have nothing left to fight for. After saying their goodbyes, Quan and Beckett arrange for Beckett to be picked up in Cambodia, which is only across the border. The incident leaves Beckett shaken and dejected, and on his way home, he hears on the radio that Gaylor gave up his Senate seat, and halted his political career, and William killed himself. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.